Chris Shandek, C1 interview covering Las Vegas and the world. Today, we welcome former professional wrestling superstar from the World Wrestling Entertainment and World Championship Wrestling. He's been an inspirational speaker for over 17 years. Thinkpause.org is his website. He'll be coming to Las Vegas next month. But first, before we get to that, the one, the only, Mark Merrow. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark, sir. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's great to be on your, your podcast. I've been looking forward to this, man. I really enjoy what you guys do. And uh, meeting yeah. Rob and, and seeing you again, Chris, is, is great, man. Oh, absolutely, Rob. Uh, Mark, it's been almost 10 years. And of course, see one of your sponsors, the founder of Epic Financial Strategies, LC, Mr. Rob Gill. Rob, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you, Chris. Pleasure to be here. And as always, tremendous guests, and they get better and better. Thank you so much. We appreciate that, Rob. So, Mark, just to begin, um, you know, you've been doing this now for more than 15 years. What has the experience been like? When did you know this was your calling that you were going to be done with professional wrestling? And now you speak to kids all across the country for more than like now was it almost 150 speakings a year. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I've been, you know, like I said, like you said, this is my 17th year speaking at schools, uh, churches, corporations. I just got back from Puerto Rico. Uh, at the end of this month, we're going to the United Kingdom and doing presentations out there. It's just been to Russia, Guatemala. It's just been an incredible journey. You know, in, in, in life, we always look at what our, our gift is, what our calling is, so to speak. And, you know, I, I loved wrestling and it was like, you know, it was entertaining, but this is something that is life changing. And I really felt it was my calling and it was, it just came out of nowhere. Actually, I opened up my own personal training studio in uh, Orlando, Florida. And uh, one of the local schools, Melbourne High School, just called and asked me if I would come and speak to their football players, you know, being a former athlete and, you know, making the right choices in life and not doing drugs and so on you know and i went and spoke to the kids it was great you know i really enjoyed it um but i i was surprised at how many kids emailed me from the presentation and said how it changed their life or inspired them but unbeknownst to me that the school called another high school and said hey you got to have this guy come speak to your kids they had me come and speak to the whole school and it snowballed from then and then of course some of my videos went viral and and in fact, the one video that uh, the Mother's Love video that went viral, our first month after that video went viral, we had 3,000 booking requests around the world. And it's just taken off since then. And, um, and I really found my calling in life. Yeah, just one need to make note of one thing. Um, on February 21st, you're going to be coming here to Las Vegas to speak at Somerset yes. Academy, Sky Canyon Campus here. Tell me about coming to Las Vegas. Have you spoke here before? What are you looking forward to coming here? Yes, I've been to Vegas uh, many times speaking at schools here. I'm looking forward to this. Um, and we do have an opening, if anyone's listening to this, that has a yeah. school that was interested in me coming. The 20th, I'll be in town the day before. Yeah. And I have openings on that day if you'd like me to come and speak to your middle school or high school or college. And, well, uh, absolutely. We'll get the word out here in the Las Vegas community for sure. Rob, um, Mark is a total guy who is a total entrepreneur for sure. Went from being, you know, one of the biggest stars in pro wrestling in the last, you know, 30 years to now speaking all the time. Thoughts, questions, ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, when are you in Jersey next? That, that's a question I have. Oh, that's, that's, we're, we're in New Jersey all the time, which is amazing. I know we're going to uh, uh, Long Island. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the, the, I know it's the reason I know it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> we're there the 14th and 15th of, of February. We'll be in Long Island, but we're we're in New Jersey quite a bit. I, I don't I don't have my schedule right in front of me. Yeah, I'll connect. Yeah, definitely connect. I have a um, I have a, a really a, a very fast growing AAU program for basketball. I played basketball growing up. Oh, okay. And here in New Jersey, and you know we got like the number two team in the country for fourteen year olds. Wow. Our sixteen and seventeen year olds, we have an you know we have a an nil collective set up. So the the talent that we got coming in there is pretty incredible. And um, you know, thinking in the spring maybe we could have something set up because it is a bunch of kids that that uh, that come through our circuit, and and you know we're building something special from that standpoint. We have a financial literacy course set up and everything else, you know, from a digital perspective. And these kids get to learn how to become entrepreneurs and how to do social media and brand themselves and, and also influence people in the way we were taught on how to have conversations with integrity, of course, but how to influence with integrity. So that's why I was asking, you know, if you're in Jersey, I'll find out your dates and then maybe figure if we could get you in there at, during, yeah. during your swing. We'll connect yeah. you, Rob. Yeah, that'd be wonderful, Rob. You get all my information from from Chris, my phone number, everything, and we'll we'll make this happen. Awesome. So, so let me ask you this: as I sit here and I was watching some of the clips, where, where did you originally grow up? Like, where did it all start for you? Um, I, I was born in Buffalo, New York, 
And I stayed there and then went to high school in, in Syracuse, New York, in a little town called Liverpool. Uh, but mostly uh, growing up in Buffalo, New York, on the west side of Buffalo, which was a really bad neighborhood at that time. I don't, I'm not sure what it's like now. Did you grow up in Buffalo around the same time as Christian Leitner or his family? Um, I, I, Christian Leitner is much younger than me, but um, yeah. you look you, you, know, know, you look you look young for whatever age you are. Christian <laughs> is my age. Hey, buddy, I'm ready to get like Social Security now, man. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> AARP. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, just asking. So, so you grew up in Buffalo. You went to Syracuse and high school in Syracuse. And were you a standout football player? Like, what did it look like early on for you? I, I was. I played football for – I don't know if you ever heard of Coach George O'Leary. He was the coach at UCF. He was, he was won the national title at Georgia Tech. Yep. He was my high school football coach. We won the state title in New York. Um, but I was also a standout hockey player. I played junior hockey. I played hockey for the uh, Syracuse Stars. And uh, then, of course, uh, boxing was my was something I, I really enjoyed and excelled at. Uh, was a, a four-time New York State boxing champion, won the New York State Golden Gloves, the uh, uh, gold medal in the Empire State Games, and then became uh, then went to the USA boxing team in Colorado Springs. And um, then year, made, what year was that? If you don't mind me asking, uh, that was uh, the, the the year after they boycotted the Olympics. It was 1981. Okay, so so being on the, yeah, being in there, we would have to wait three more years until the 84 Olympics. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Were you did you get who were you trained by during the uh, when you were a national fighter? Who, who was your trainers? Uh, well, the one who brought me to USA Boxing was Pat Nappy, but my personal trainer was Ray Rinaldi, who was to this day it just changed so many lives of young people. He's Amazing. he's like my mentor, man. And he's he's ninety, gosh, he's ninety six years old. It's just incredible. We we keep yeah. in touch all the time, and I, every time I'm in New York, I go see him, Amazing. and uh, just he's like a second dad to me. And where do you live now? I live in uh, the outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. All right. So, you, so you, your national presence is you're speaking all the time and you're, you're traveling all the time. Is that still I, – I heard you and Chris talking a little bit earlier. You've gone from 250 dates to 150 dates. <laughs> yeah, so but I, I've been living out of a hotel for over 30 years of my life. So, <laughs> But it sounds like you have a desire to give back. Can you talk a little bit about what that feels like for you and why you yeah. do um, I tell you, and, and you know, coaching kids, there, there's no greater joy than helping another person. You know, we're, we're all going to leave a legacy, but mine's not going to be um, the wrestling or, or how big my house was or how nice my car was or how much money I, I made. It's going to be the difference I made in someone else's life. And that's what I live for, man. I, I really like, we, we just did these big arena shows in Alabama. And they were amazed at how I stayed after. I wanted any kid that wanted to meet me, they just lined them up, man. And I was shaking hands, high five, hugs, whatever it would be, uh, hearing their little bit of their story. <clears throat> you know, it was just incredible. And then receiving all the messages after, and then identifying kids that maybe are self harming or feel like they don't want to be here anymore, or going through a really hard time, being bullied or abused. And those are the kids we really reach out and, and, and try and help as much as possible. You know, that's a great point. And because I know when we were coming up, we were taught like not to talk about stuff like that. And I'm sure you you growing up in that same mindset. How do you relate to those kids now and let them know it's OK to talk about it? Because you whatever your situation was, you were clearly a great athlete. Um, but whatever, if you had demons yourself, how do you how do you relate to the kids and talk through that with them? Rob, that is a great question. And I often use an analogy is that when you hold something inside, it, it's like a volcano. And sooner or later, that volcano will erupt, and it mostly erupts in negative behavior, whether it's yeah. depression, anxiety, whether it's bullying or abusing another person because of the pain that you're going through or having horrible relationships with your own family. And that's why it's so important to talk about it. I go, my life changed because I finally opened up and talked about some childhood trauma that I went through as a kid. And I didn't realize how it led to anger issues and bad relationships with my own family or uh, you know, marriage and divorce and marriage and divorce and just so many problems in my life that when I finally confronted them, my whole life changed. So I'm very honest and open about my own story where I share with students that end up opening up and finally talking about something they may be, they may be going through. Amazing. Amazing. You know, you speak from the heart, you touch the heart. That's obvious. Uh, Chris, Chris, back to you, brother. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say one thing, Rob. You know, uh, Mark, Rob has an upcoming book coming out, Surviving Success. I think Mark Merrill's story is the example of surviving success. No, Rob? Uh, no question about it. The book is about, as I got sober, Mark, after 1996, and I came from a background of no money. We ran out of money on the 20th of every month. There was dysfunctional relationship in our house about money. There were, every fight in our house was centered around money. So my viewpoint on money was just terrible growing up, right? So I got into my own addiction. You know, I drank and did drugs all at the same time my senior year. It took me from age 18 to 25, and then I got sober, right? And um, I started working on Wall Street, and eventually I went from making 12 to 28 to 42 to 120,000, 300 up to a million in a seven-year stretch while I was sober. And emotionally, I couldn't handle the money. It was a, it was unaddressed wealth wounds from growing up. And as I climbed the wall of success, surviving it became a whole different challenge. And, you know, there was setbacks, there was learning experience. And even as I wrote the book, and I'm going to add this into the book, right, like in the next two or three days, I had to go through another wave of surviving success because I had gone, uh, we got our company to, to be worth about $27 million. Um, I was now making money that I'd never seen before. And I made, you know, I got sloppy and, and a little bit egotistical and arrogant as a result of it. I'm so I'm going through that as we speak. Thank God I have beautiful people in my life that helped me through it. And the point of the book is how do you survive financial success? And is success just about money? Money is a tool to either make the world a better place or not. How do we make the world a better place and at the same time tell our story of surviving success? So the book is great, I think, because it's my personal journey, but it's also to let the world know that if I could do it, you could do it. And then if I could do it and then get successful, you can too, but you don't have to make the mistakes I made. Mark, oh, that's, well, you know, it's it's amazing that you can take a couple hours to read someone's book that, that took a whole lifetime to write. Exactly. You can know wisdom is so important, man. And you get you get wisdom from one of three ways. You get wisdom from like books and DVDs like yours. You get wisdom from mentors, coaches, teachers, no or you get wisdom from mistakes. And I think you and I have learned so much from mistakes we made in our life that we can now help others not make those same mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. It's almost like I have to make the mistake, right? Like it's like just constantly running in the wall, but hopefully we can get through that and, and make different kind of mistakes that aren't about surviving success, but advancing success in a different yeah. way. Yeah. Yes. Mark, the, sto the story is, is that, I mean, you're speaking with kids every day, you know, Rob's got this very successful a youth basketball league that he's launched, you know, just recently, it's basically incredible. And you guys both work with kids. And I thought that's why you guys would be great together today. Yeah, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to to getting to know uh, Rob more and uh, hopefully working together with him somehow. Absolutely. And Mark, where do you see, like, this trajectory has been incredible. Where do you see this when you have your team or whatever? Where do you see this going in the next five years? Like, what does it look like for you? Oh, that's a great question, Rob. You know, it's uh, it's been an incredible journey. Like I said, it's over 17 years now of going all over the world. And, um, you know, I just enjoy helping people but the coolest thing is man is getting letters from kids that saw me 5 10 15 years ago that now you know are playing in the nfl or or i have a record deal or have a successful business and they attribute it to the day i came to school that they i always talk about writing your goals and dreams into existence man right. you know it's so important uh, having a vision board but you know i always talk about putting your dreams and goals somewhere where you have to see it. You know, Rob, when I when I wrote my first book, it was 2010, and I decided to write this book in 2008. So what I did was I took a post-it note, and all I did was write book 2010, and I stuck it on my computer. Now, every day I got in front of that computer, what do I see? <laughs> that yep. dream, that goal, that deadline, right? And by challenging myself, um, the first year, I'll be honest, I didn't really write a whole lot, but then realized that I had one year left. I started writing as much as possible, and the book was delivered in December of 2009, just a couple of weeks before 2010, so I beat my deadline. But if it wasn't for that post-it note that was on my computer, I probably never would have written my first book. Amazing. And, 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 you know, uh, speak it in and write it into existence. And you actually put a deadline on that goal, right? So oh, yeah. Yeah. even if you would have wrote 2009, it would have been done in 2009. Like it was, you wrote a deadline to it, right? And then well, you keep yourself accountable by doing that, Rob, you know, yeah. by having that in front of you. And, you know, because oftentimes we say we want to do something, but, you know, weeks turn to months and months turn to years. And we say, oh, I always wish I would have done that. But yeah. when it's in front of you, it forces you to take action towards that goal or dream. 
Yeah, and what I'm hearing you talk about, Sean Callagy, one of is one of my partners, mentors, and coaches. He always talks about a three pronged or tripartite division of self mastery, process mastery, and influence mastery. And the self mastery is what you're describing right now, where you have to show up every day in the peak state. And to be able to do that, having a goal written on your computer is uh, an amazing way to do that. Yeah. You know, uh, Rob, another thing is, is that I actually have a book from when I was 10 years old. I wrote my dreams and goals into existence. It has gone to every one of my presentations over the last 17 years. And what I do is I hold up that book. And this is a book that I wrote down the dreams and goals that would eventually become a reality, writing it down when I was 10 years old. And there were some things in there that did not become a reality. Like I'll give you an example, right? I believe when I was a little kid, I was going to be a scientist too. Not only a professional athlete I wrote down, but I believe I was going to be a scientist. I was going to have the cure for mentally ill children. That was one of my dreams, right? I wrote it down. And even though I never accomplished that, see, failure is not aiming high and missing. Failure is aiming too low and hitting. And I just encourage people to dream big, think big, man. It's okay if you don't uh, attain that, that goal or dream, but just don't aim too low. Sometimes we settle for the status quo. And, and you know, Robin, many times that's like that and as adults. We become complacent in life and one day becomes the next and we settle for the status quo and we say things like those were the days man i'm here to tell you these are the days these are yeah. days we learn from past mistakes we grow in grace and knowledge we can do anything we set our minds to amazing and and you know my first question is like when you wrote you were 10 years old who taught you to roll goals down you know I, I i don't remember exactly i remember that um we had this this teacher and i believe her name was miss polino that mentioned to us in school that you should write your dreams and goals down and i got i found this little notebook i i had and i started writing things down and it was kind of funny because i'd write things down like and they're a lot of more materialistic because we were so poor just like your family we were just so poor man you know yeah. what's so what's so funny rob is that to save milk, we would use a fork <laughs> so we could save milk. That's how poor we were, okay? Yeah. My mom would buy our clothes like at garage sales. It was it was horrible way yeah. of life like that. Yeah. But anyways, you learn so much. Your your current trial is gonna be your future testimony. You know, you it's know? funny. It's funny because the first time I heard about goals and my, my so I'm the youngest of four, and between me and the next youngest is eight, eleven, and twelve years. And my one sister who's eleven years older than me, I'm not sure what familiarity you have with basketball, but she married Bob Hurley, the coach of St. Anthony's in New Jersey. Oh, yeah. His he brother. Was great, he was a great college player, also. No, but his dad, I'm talking about. So his dad is oh, Bob. I got gotcha. That coach yeah. St. Anthony's. There was a Hurley that was a really good basketball player. That's him. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, you, so you have Bob Senior, right, who okay. coached high school, is the greatest high school coach in history. Then you have Bob Junior, my age, who played for Duke, right? Yes. And then you have yes. Danny, who just coached UConn to a national championship, right? Yeah. But Bob Sr., his brother, Timmy, is married to my sister. Oh, okay. So when I was in fifth grade, talk about goals. When I was in fifth grade, this is the first time I heard about goals. Bob Jr. that played for Duke. You know, the families are meeting each other. And now we're becoming like cousins through marriage and fast friends. And he would always say he has a goal to play Division One basketball. And I remember, I'm just sitting here, and I had a goal to be good at Atari. Like, that was like, that was like the difference in age, right? You know what I mean? So... So, so proximity, as you know, Mark, is power. And yeah. who you surround yourself with is who you become. Oh, that's top good, five. brother. That's true, man. Right? Look at your top five. And it could be in different, like, I have a top five in finance. I have top five in coaching mentors. I have a top five in, you know, how to influence on social media. You know, so so the top five is real important in, in all these little micro distinctions. But you took me back in time when you started talking about goals. And I wanted to share that with you. Yeah, well, thank you, man. You know, um, getting back to what I was saying was that when I was writing my goals and dreams down at, at 10 years old, there were things like, um, man, I was going to be a professional athlete. I was going to win rookie of the year. I was going to buy a big black Cadillac. I was going to buy a speedboat, uh, buy my mom a house. All these things became true by yeah. writing them into existence, you know, and uh, and I encourage young people, man. I I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's when you, another thing you recently just said was that about we we become who we surround ourselves with yeah you, know, you show me your friends i'll show you your future I and agree. it's so, it's so important you know that um we surround ourselves with negative people with, with positive people because there's so many negative people out there and the saddest part is is sometimes they're friends and even family members who are going to tell you why you can't do something you're yeah. never going to graduate uh, high school you'll never go to college you'll never be an influencer you'll never be a professional athlete you'll never play d1 whatever it is the reason why they tell you you can't do it 
is because they can't do it. That's right. Don't give up on your dreams and goals. And they chose not to do it. Can you? Because you, it sounds like besides kids, you you speak to corporations, business owners. I do. I do yeah. I, I just came back from Puerto Rico. I spoke to a big uh, a big conference out there, and it was incredible, man. I, I love speaking to my peers because uh, just from so much wisdom over my own life that I could share with with uh, you know people that can really relate to my story and not just you know talking to kids about bullying and depression and some of the things like that, but uh, really to, uh, honing in on what we go through as adults. Yeah. And and with that, can you talk a little bit about just from whatever's at the top of your head when it comes to a business owner? Because, you know, my this video is going to go to my community. Mm -hmm. Business owners that work in the business and only go to a certain ceiling versus working on the business and can scale. Do you have anything you want to talk about that on how to be able to break that ceiling of complexity and get out of the status quo? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I got to tell you something. Everyone has a little bit different dynamic. Sometimes it, it comes down to maybe work ethic or maybe it's putting too much work in, you know. Yep. Um, I always find that, man, how we treat others really plays a big significant role in our businesses. Yep. Because if you're not kind to your employees who are out there working hard for you, um, they not they may not put in the work that you you need them to do. And yeah. sometimes you be the example, you be that work ethic, you be that, you know, hey, you know, big smile, high five, it goes a long ways, man, a pat on the back instead of a kick in the rear. And uh, I always find that, man, I get a lot more out of people by, by really praising them on the good things that they do. And you always talk about the things that maybe that you would like different, but you can say that in a very positive way. And I think people miss that opportunity instead of maybe yelling or demeaning someone, they could use it as, um, you know, a, a, a inspirational way of really just talking about something that didn't go as well as they would hope for. Mm. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Chris, back to you, brother. Uh, okay. Mark is tremendous, as you as you said he was. <laughs> Mark is is one of a kind. Um, Mark, let me just say this to you, and, and I'm sure that this is you know this is the sad and the dark side of it. But it's like a lot of people that you work with in in the highest levels of mainstream professional wrestling, on you know millions of people were seeing you guys every week. Many of these guys are passed away, dead. Um, how does that make you feel? Do you feel like you're a survivor? You know, um, when I talk about all the people that I have wrestled against that are no longer here that died so young, many of them under 40 years old. And, uh, and a lot of them are because of bad choices. You know, there's obviously there's, there's things that happen, whether it's, you know, uh, murder or suicide or something that, that happened, but a lot of them became down to their choices with, with drug abuse and things like that, pain medication and just, just partying. And I really look at my own life and the mistakes I made because I, I got caught up in that myself traveling and touring and stuff and and i remember actually missing events and i'll never forget man you know dusty Rhodes was the was the booker at the time and dusty Rhodes created the character johnny be bad i'll never forget he brought me into his office and he said something to me that i never forgot because i love dusty Rhodes. he was my mentor he was the one that created the character he's yeah. gave me the life and sure. he said he said kid let me tell you something I made you and I can break you. You miss one more show, one more event. You will never wrestle with me before me again. And I was like, wow, my whole dream and goal of ever since I was a little boy of becoming this person, this, this professional athlete was almost taken away because of stupid choices that I was making, partying all night and then missing my flight and so on and so forth. And just being disrespectful, you know, I learned so much from that. And, 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 um, I see all the friends that have passed away, you know, that I call, that are on, on what I call a death list, all these people, right? And I look at this death list and I think, I should have been on that death list. Death list. I did everything they did. And some nights I did a whole lot more. You know, I've overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. And I, I share that with students that, that by the end of this presentation, your life is going to be forever changed as you hear the conclusion of my story. And it's been, it's just been an incredible journey that I'm able to share this and talk about this. Um, and, and on, um, um, uh, October 19th was my 20 year anniversary of being clean from drugs. So it's been, it's been just like you, Rob, you, know, right. it's, you get through it. And now you can really help a lot of other people because we meet people that are going through the same thing that we once went through. And you just show, you, you show how great life can be, man, how, how fun it could be and how, Oh, oh my gosh, your current trials, your future testimony, where you're going to help other people down the road. Amazing. Rob, Rob, final comments? 
Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, tremendous one day at a time, but there go me for the grace of God, right? I am the example of getting shot at in Jersey City. Um, you know, I, I lived the life of self-imprisonment for seven years, you know, from age 18 to 25 and, and have been given the gift, as you know, Mark, of what it's like to, to be on the other side of that in sobriety one day at a time. So, um, I think our greatest gift is being able to share our journey with people. And, you know, for me, the disease snuck up on me insidiously, didn't see it coming, although it was in my family. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it is a disease of the mind, as you know, and to be able to, to be able to get on the other side and share that. And that's how God works, you know, through us human beings sharing their experience, strength and hope and being a, a, a level five listener and a shining example, but at the same time, drawing a line in the sand and understanding the importance of, you know, um, you know, being able to say no, right. And being able to say no to manipulation, being able to say no to uh, negative influences and, and putting a flag in the ground. And, and those are not easy things to do. Um, I struggle saying no sometimes um, to people that, that I love, you know, we could call that uh, co-signing co other people's BS or whatever the case may be. And it's just learning how to not do that one day at a time as well as you advance in your sobriety. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Well, thank you, man. It was great meeting you, Rob and, and Chris. Uh, thank you, man. Great seeing you again. Oh, and always, always. I hope, sure. I hope I don't know if there's an opportunity to see you while I'm in Vegas, yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll, sit, we'll try to make more. Please pass we'll, on our information that uh, you know we will be there uh, on the uh, on the uh, February 21st. Looking for another opportunity on the February 20th at another school. Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. So Mark Merrill will be here in Las Vegas on February 21st at Somerset Academy Sky Canyon Campus. You'll be able to see him there. And we're looking forward to having the great former WWE Intercontinental Champion in town. So we'll leave it there. So for all our viewers today, please comment below and help us by liking and subscribing to this, subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much. And thank you to the one, the only Mark Merrill and the mighty Rob Gill. Thank you both for being on CY Interview today. Appreciate thank you guys. Yeah, God bless. Hang on. Thank you for watching today's CY interview segment from Las Vegas. Please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button to be updated on all future CY interview content from Las Vegas and beyond.